Are you ready to take your pivot table game to the next level? Let's jump right in and show you how to build a basic one and we'll go from there. So select somewhere in your data, then click insert menu and pivot table. It will automatically highlight the data range. We'll click insert on a new sheet and create. And then assuming that the suggested one is one that you can work with, we're just gonna click on this and we're done with our basic pivot table. So let's rewind for a moment and show you how to build pivot tables from scratch and go into a little more detail. So we'll go to insert and pivot table. And the first thing to note is this data range. And it's just a good time to confirm that that matches the data that you have, both the columns and the rows. The next option we have here is insert to new sheet or existing sheet. And the difference is the new sheet will create a new tab or sheet to put the pivot table on. The other one will add it to an existing sheet. And so sometimes you want to add it next to your data, or maybe you have a tab where you have your different pivot tables. So in this case, we're just going to add it to a new sheet. Now, the first thing to note is Google gives us some placeholders to give us an idea of what we need to add in what section. And so if we look over here, we see the suggested, which is what we did in the intro. And so one of these may match what you need. And if so, you can simply click on this and be done. But if that's not the case, then we can look at the rest of these. So rows, anything we click and drag into here. So for example, sales reps will show up in our row section. If we drag this down into the columns, then it'll show up across the top in our columns. And then anything we add to our values will show up as values in our table. And so, for example, we may want to put sales reps as rows and the sale amount as our values and get a quick summary in that way. Now, typically when it comes to pivot tables, we want to show things both in the rows and the columns. And so, for example, what we may want to do here is use region across the top with our sales reps in our rows. And then you can see the sales broken down by both region and sales rep. Now, one thing to note is you can do multiple levels in either rows or columns. To use this carefully, it can add some clarity to your project without adding too much more complexity. And so as an example, we could put region under sales rep. And we could even bring in product line. And you can see it just like that. So one thing to note is it displays in the order that you have it in that section. And so under rows, we have sales rep, then region, then product line. And so then they show up in that order. So first is sales rep, then region, then product line. And so if you want to rearrange that, you would just drag them. And for example, here we'd have region, then sales rep, then product line. Now let's go ahead and just remove product line just for a moment. And now in this example, we have the same sales reps for each region, but this would be really good display if you had different sales rep in each region and it'd give you a quick way to show a comparison across the different regions and for those sales reps. Now, one thing you may wanna do is put these in order of sales amount. And so you can look over here and we can sort by sum of sale amount here, and then we can pick ascending or descending. And so if you want them in order of the highest performing rep for each region, then you can just do that and that shows up in order for each region. Now, in addition to this, we may also want to see what percentage of the total sales each sales rep was getting. And so we can bring sales amount again into values. But this time, instead of showing as default, we can show as a percentage of a couple different options. So we could do as a row, which probably is not going to be the one we want because that's 100% of itself. We could do of column. And so what this is doing is adding them all out of the grand total and then grand total is still the same. So what this is doing then is showing them as a percentage of the total value here across all the regions. So then another metric we may want to bring in is the total number of sales. And so we could do this in several ways. We could just take this sale amount again, bring it in here. And this time we could do a count instead of the sum. And then that will give us the number of sales for each sales rep by region. Now let's go ahead and reset this for a moment and look at a different kind of display. And so one thing you may want to do is 
group by date. And so we have individual days in here, and so that's not particularly useful, but maybe we want to do a grouping. And so let's go ahead and just take date into our rows, and we can see all of our dates there, which isn't super useful, but if we right click over here, we can do a pivot date group. And so it gives us a number of different options. And so we can do by month, which one thing keep note of is month is year agnostic. And so if you have multiple years, then this is just going to combine all the Januaries, all the Februarys, etc. And so if you want to compare and see how your months in general compare to each other, that would be a good metric. But if you want to compare a calendar year, then you want to do year month. And so there we have our year month just like that. And now we can bring in our sales amount into values and see the total sales by month. And this would be where it'd be very natural to bring in either our region into our columns or we could bring our sales rep. And so one thing to note is if I drag it right over the previous one, it turns green and that's going to replace it. Whereas if I put it above or below, then it's going to put it next to it. So just keep that in mind. So we're just going to put this and actually replace our region. And now we can see our sales reps and the months. So it gives us a quick and easy visual to see what John's sales were like for each month. Now, one thing you may want to do is actually have these months across the top. Let's go ahead and reset again real quick. And let's go ahead and bring our dates into the columns. Now, the issue is it gives us an error. And so one thing that happens is if you try to do the dates and there's too many, so we have all these individual days. So when we put it into the rows, it was able to display just fine. But when we try to put it in the columns, it doesn't work. And so what we have to do in that case is actually make our pivot group first and then move it into our columns. And so let's say we're going to do year month. We go like that. And now we can drag this into the columns. And now it works just fine. So at this point, then we could maybe bring our sales reps into the rows and our sale amount into the value. So let's drag that down, sale amount into the values. And then we can see the months across those columns. All right, so one thing we haven't dealt with yet is this filters section. So this allows you to filter out certain data or determine what you want to include. And so let's go ahead and just add filter. And so you can do this by one of the columns in the original data. And so let's say we want to actually exclude one or more regions. So this looks like the filter tool that you have when you're working with the data. And so the way that works is whatever you have selected here will show up. And so if we want to, let's say, only show data for the north region, we can unselect those or we can just do clear and then just select the one we want. And to reset it, you can just select all. And so for example, let's go again and just select north. And so now you can see all the numbers are decreased quite significantly because it's only showing for north. So we could include east again, and you can see the numbers adjust accordingly. So this is a great way to quickly adjust what you display in your pivot table. And you can do this by either multiple. So if you want to do by region and sales rep, and you can determine how you want that to display. And then if you want to remove one, you can just remove one just like that. So that's a quick way to validate some of that. Another thing you could do, for example, under the filters, here we could do a filter by condition. And maybe we'd say we want something that is greater than a thousand. And now it's only showing the results for any sales that are greater than a thousand. All right, so before we wind up, I'm going to show you how to do some formatting here. But before we do so, I want to show you how to do calculated fields real quick. And so let's go ahead and reset this real quick. And then let's determine a way we can do this. So let's just bring in sales reps into our rows. And then let's just bring in a couple different varieties of the sale amount. So let's bring this in. So we'll just do our total sales. Let's maybe take in our quantity here. Now let's look at what if we want to figure out the average price per unit. So in other words, we want to take sale amount and divide it by the quantity. And so we could add it as a column in our data and, and divide our sale amount by our quantity, or we can do it directly in our pivot table. And the way we would do that is under values, click on add. 
and we're going to do a calculated field. And so under here, we can put in a formula. So one thing to make sure is you change this to custom. And then what we can do here is we can actually reference the column names and do some math on it. So the thing to keep in mind is you need to use a single quote and wrap any column that has a space in it. And so here we can do sale amount, single quote divided by quantity. And then there we go. There is our average price per unit. All right, so to wrap this video up, let's look at some quick formatting options we can do so we can close out this editor. Now, one thing to keep note, if you need to get back to the pivot table editor, if you hover over it and you look at the bottom left, you can see this edit button that will bring you back here and then you can adjust those options as needed. So in here, we can actually rename any of these columns that we want. So we can change this, for example, to quantity. We can change this to sales or revenue. So let's just call it sales. And here we can do price per unit. And we can even change the colors if we want to change the colors on this. And change that formatting. So we can copy and paste that formatting there. We change that to white too. And then we could add some lines in this if you like. Now, one thing to note is that this won't remember some of the stuff if it adds more lines. And so the headers, for example, will be okay, but some of this won't necessarily stay in place. And so if this is something that's going to modify afterwards and you want it to stay in place. And you probably don't want a pivot table. You actually probably want to build something manually. But if this is just something you're building real quick and then you want a quick report or display for that, then this would be perfectly fine. And so another thing we could do then as well, if you like, you could add a border around the whole thing. Something like that, if you like, and so forth. And, and obviously, then you can also put this more in the middle if you want. So it's not just shoved up against the top corner. If you want to use it as part of a dashboard or display. All right, so that's it for this quick video on pivot tables. Make sure to check out our other videos for more tutorials on both Goo Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.